I'm Sarah and welcome back to Browning Reptiles. Today we are going to cover one of the most cutest snakes of the entire world. These guys are the Western hognose snake. The reason they call them hognose snakes? Well, let me just show you their face. The Western hognose snake has this really cute upturned nose. They use that nose as a form of shovel. So these animals, they do prefer to be underground and they will use that nose to help bury themselves under the dirt. You're gonna notice that I've got two very different looking hognose snakes. This one here is Dolly. Dolly is an eight-year-old female. In my opinion, she is not her full size. She was a surrender, so the person who owned her uh, was no longer able to properly take care of her and reached out to us, and she, that's how she became um, one of our ambassador am animals. Joey here, he is a male hognose. He is probably his full size. The males do not get nearly as big as the females. And his colorations are more of a normal or wild type color. Where you'll notice with Dolly, she has a lot more red pigment in her scales. So they would say she is a normal type, but she has a high red pigment in her scales. Not exactly sure if you can tell, but the scales on the hognose snake are slightly raised. They call this keeled scales. So when you feel them, they're a lot more rough than say your garter snake, if you were to ever feel a garter snake. They're more along the lines of scales that you would feel on a northern water snake. The western hognose does come from North America, but this one is more of the western portions of North America. But they aren't a large species of snake, so they are going to try and eat smaller things, uh, specifically nothing that is larger than the thickest part of their body. This snake species is a um, comedian or an actor. These animals, what they will do if they feel threatened or scared, rather than trying to attack what is threatening them, they will literally roll over onto their back. They'll flash these really beautiful bright scales on their body. And they'll actually open their mouth and play dead. I cannot get Dolly to do that. She is not feeling threatened by us at all. Dolly here, like I mentioned before, she was a surrender. A lot of the animals that we do have here at Browning Reptiles, probably over 50% of them um, are either rescues or surrenders. Now, when I refer to a rescue, uh, we'll get quite often get a phone call that say someone has abandoned uh, a snake in an apartment or in their home and the animal has nowhere to go so we will go and rescue that animal we will provide it with a sanctuary we'll ensure that that animal gets any health um, needs in order to get it back to thriving if perhaps it happens to be sick uh, and often we will rehome those animals once they've been re rehabilitated However, Dolly here, being as sweet and as amazing as she is, she is a permanent resident now with us here at uh, Browning Reptiles, and she is one that we quite often bring to our educational shows. What we have here is a snake shed from Dolly, specifically. Um, it actually does come off in one long piece like this. A lot of times you'll find snake sheds in a ball 
uh, because the animal will physically use their muscles and the skin will roll off of their body. So when you find them stretched out like this, they've usually grabbed onto something or anchored onto uh, say a tree branch or a rock or some kind of rough surface. And they've used that rough surface to help pull that skin off of their body. You will notice that sh she has actually shed her eyes. So they don't have eyelids, they do have eye caps. So skin that covers their eyes and they will, they do need to shed that. Uh, this animal is healthy. Her skin came off in one beautiful long piece. If the animal is not hydrated enough or say uh, their enclosure specifically is too dry, the skin will come off in little tiny bits um, or sometimes there will be stuck skin left behind on the snake itself. Here we do end up with a lot of excess sheds. So when we do our school programs or our school presentations, quite often I will take a package. The kids can have a handout. They can take a sample of a snake skin home with them. Or for the older grades, they can even use their microscopes and look at the snake skin underneath the microscope and get really into the biology of the animal. Uh, I'm Amy and I am the owner and operator of Reveal Upholstery. Um, I work here out of my home in my basement. Um, it works really well for me. I don't have the overhead and stuff and I get to be home. I'm a mom, so I've got two girls and a husband. Uh, I got into upholstery just dabbling for fun as a hobby years ago. Um, I've sewn for business on and off over the years but never strictly upholstery and then about two years ago I kind of fell back into just doing it I had some people contact me and ask if I could do it and I said sure and now it's just become a big thing and I registered my business and here I am for anyone who's not aware upholstery is just the process of taking a piece of furniture and building it up to be whatever it is that you want it to be or the style you want it to be. I do a lot um, with more antique style furniture. Um, this piece right here, for example, is a family heirloom. I believe she mentioned it was came from Poland, where they are from. Um, so it has traveled quite a distance and been in the family for a long time. And I love anything old. I love history. Um, and I love preserving history. I've got a couple pieces in the background that we are doing recreating historically accurate. Um, this piece, like it's been updated with foam um, and batting and more modern techniques. I've got other pieces where I'm going back and using horsehair and straw um, and maintaining those historical aspects. And I think that's really cool and so important. So like another 50 or 100 years from now, somebody else can tear it back and be like, wow. Um, and I love that. Um, so this piece here is an incredible um, antique couch that we have dated back to somewhere between 1810, 1830. It is a truly incredible piece. piece. It's been in um, the client's family for many generations now. Um, and this here is, or will be her goodie bag at the end. Um, not everybody has stuff in the cracks of their furniture, but some people do, and I like to give them their stuff back. So this couch, interestingly enough, um, there was a wrench. <laughs> uh, lots of Scrabble pieces, uh, a diaper clip, beer cap, guitar picks, um, just lots of fun little goodies. Some old antique Christmas paper in here, which was neat. 
Um, so that's just a little extra thing that you, I don't throw your stuff out. You get a little goodie bag at the end. <laughs> so yeah like so those are all bent and broken there's no saving them um so that will all get cleaned out these will all be replaced and they will all be retied to keep them supported for another hundred years over the years i've done all kinds of things i as i mentioned i've done um, a vintage truck seat and i did it all in leather um i chairs sofas i've done boats snowmobiles four-wheelers i've done tractors and i really love like helping people select their choices and i quite often go into people's homes and take the samples with me so we can look at colors and options in their own lighting um, and get a really good feel for how it's all going to come together for them and i love that whole interaction and that whole like planning and then completing it to pull it all together for them I'm really fortunate that I was able to take something that I did as a hobby and for fun as a creative outlet and make it my business and my income and to help support my family doing something that I thought was just a hobby. Um, I am entirely self-taught. At one time I did look into trying to find courses and um, apprenticeships but there's nothing local. Um, so I've done a lot of reading, a lot of and I, I'm lucky I'm a hands-on learner, so tearing down really teaches me a lot and then how to build it back up. Um, but just the whole, I could take something that I've always loved and make it my business has been incredible. For anybody who is maybe interested in having um, a piece looked at or getting a quote, looking at some fabric to get some ideas and inspiration, um, I'm happy to help you with that. Um, all my consults are no charge, um, so there's no commitment, no expectation with that. I can be reached um, email revealupholstery at gmail.com. I'm on Facebook, Reveal Upholstery, Instagram the same, um, and I'm also on Google. So you can always just Google Reveal Upholstery and I will come up. So the Starter Company Plus program um, I saw an ad for it, I don't know, somewhere online and I looked into it and I thought, oh, I need help. Um, I'm really good at the creative aspect, at the building aspect. It's the books and the numbers and all of that stuff that you don't really think about that I struggle with. Um, and I would much rather just do the creative bit, but I can't. So <laughs> um, I applied and I was very fortunate to be accepted and they the program and Sandy have been a huge help in helping me figure out how to run my books and if am I charging enough or am I you know all those little things to make sure that your business is going to be a profitable bus profitable business because that is the point of being in business <laughs> um, and it's been really great too for connecting with other people who are going through the same sorts of experiences and are having the same struggles and to be able to talk those things out um, because just talking things out you can almost always come up with a solution um, and so it's just been really great help that way I mean the financial grant of it was also excellent it en enabled me to purchase some more tools or upgrade some of the tools that I had um, a little bit more money for advertising it allowed me um, I've hired a girl uh, two days a week and it's allowed me to do that so that helps with I think going back to the community too, because she's a local woman. Um, and it's been wonderful having an extra set of hands. Um, and without the program, I couldn't have done that at the time that I did. It would have taken me longer to get to a point where I, I could hire somebody. Um, so I've been able to do that now. And I'm hoping to still get a little bit more coaching towards like the financial bookkeeping kind of stuff. And I'm working on that. <laughs> Uh, maybe some organizational tips, um, but otherwise, you know, just the program has been a phenomenal opportunity and I'm very grateful that I was accepted into it. Um, and it's made a big impact on what I've been able to do so quickly. The Starter Company Plus program is a government funded program that is offered by the City of Kawartha Lakes. It offers training, mentorship and a grant of up to $5,000. We've had numerous startup businesses go through the program in the past couple of years, and it has contributed to their success. If you want to know more about this program, or if you know somebody that may be interested, you can go to the City of Kawartha Lakes website. 
Um, you'll also find out about uh, the next cohort, which will be starting in the spring, and um, pass on the information to anybody that you know that may be interested. Hi, I'm Jordan Prosper. I'm the Director of Community and Sports Services with Community Care City of Worth Lakes. And I'm Carrie Daly and I'm the Program Manager for Home Support Services in the Adult Day Program. And our Adult Day Program, as you see behind us, is one of the programs that we offer under our Community and Sports Services window. We're currently in our Lindsay location. We have three different locations across the City of Corth Lakes. Fenlon, Bob Cajun, and Lindsay, and we're extremely thrilled to offer this program. And this program is um, very beneficial to the clients that participate. Uh, they um, meet their friends here at the program and they do social and recreational uh, activities that help maintain their independence. But the added benefit for the loved ones or the family and caregivers is that they get a break from their huge responsibility of looking after their uh, family member. They, uh, many attend the program. Uh, weekly, um, several times throughout the week, some all week, uh, but it, it's a really important program that uh, provides the support to the client and their families that are um, living independently in the community. And we're about to introduce you to the, the lovely volunteers, caregivers and staff that we have to help support this program and we couldn't do it without them. Okay, you're going to take it and you're going to use your fingertips and you're going to slowly roll it down your leg, down your leg, using both hands, both, use both fingers. Both. <laughs> Um, my name is Vicki Foote. I am one of the coordinators of the Adult Day program um, and we run a program for clients with special needs and cognitive issues as well as socialization and other um, different abilities that they have at the program. So we do um, lots of activities for our clients when they're here. Um, as a volunteer, I come in and just assist uh, wherever the need is. Um, I often help with the lunch program um, when they have uh, and snack program and the activities wherever the, my need is is I'm there. Um, we couldn't survive without our volunteers to start off with. Um, m most of our volunteers that we have here give more of their time than just what we've initially asked from them. <laughs> As Gail knows, sometimes I call her. Uh, but we do lots of activities for the clients. We help with caregiver relief for their uh, caregivers, for the spouses. So we do cognitive and physical activities that are modified for their abilities within the program. We do range of motion exercises, things to keep them active and promote independence to keep them in their home. Everybody knows your name and they're always so glad you came, you know, so. My name is Zita Devan. I live in Lindsay and I take full advantage of all the wonderful programs that Community Care offers, especially the day program. Uh, my husband is, has dementia and he's here twice a week. It's, uh, they're treated like one of the guys. They're not these old people that can't do things. They're, you know, it's, it's, it's very heartwarming and uh, I've said to the staff many times, you know, if one of these hard days that are really hard and you go home and say, why am I doing this? Well, I gotta let you know, I couldn't do this without you. Like, they are amazing. So, um, I drop them off, I do what I like uh, <laughs> on those two days. As being a volunteer here, it is just an amazing, amazing program that's available to the community. Um, it does definitely help the caregivers uh, have their time um, and it does keep the clients in their home, which is ultimately the best goal ever. Um, Vicki's correct, they do everything. Exercises, um, you know, talking on how their day is, uh, what they've done. Uh, since they last saw them. Uh, some come, what, once a week, twice a week, some come all week. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, it, it, it's, just, it, it, it's just an amazing, amazing program for the community. 
as well. So once a client is registered with our program, if a caregiver has needs an appointment out of town and it's not on their regular loved one's day to attend the program, we can be flexible and bring them in for that additional day or switch days so that we can accommodate the needs of the caregiver. So it is a, an overarching, it's not just about the clients, it's about the caregivers, mm -hmm. the family, the community, and whatever we can do to support them. The thing I find with volunteering is, is um, I was a nurse before, so I missed that caring component. So it is not only just coming in and doing the volunteer, but it's spending time with the clients. You get that back. You get that back. It's both ways. Um, it, 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 it's, it, I just love volunteering. I really do. What else can I say about it? It's, um, it's just a game changer. And their volunteers and are equal to their staff. Like everyone is, uh, is, is absolutely wonderful. I do take advantage of their um, uh, Meals on Wheels, their frozen meals. Um, I was finding with Brian uh, the meals that I was preparing for him, um, I had to change because of it's, it's he'll look at the plate and kind of move the food around trying to identify it or if he had to cut it, uh, if it was complicated for him, he would only eat half of it. And at first I thought it was because his, his diet, or like he was just eating less. But really what it was is that he got bored with, and, and, and uh, so uh, I, try, I was given a complimentary f uh, Meals on Wheels from this program, from the, the day program. And he ate it all up. <laughs> there was nothing because everything's small, cut very small. Um, they and it's uh, portion controlled, and so he eats that every night, and I make myself my own dinner. But uh, it's 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 a game changer, really. The exercise is different all the time, which it's changing, which is amazing. With the ball, it teaches them coordination, gives them the exercise, communicating within each other, and sharing. There, there's so much that, that gets involved with it. Um, one thing that's very, very important to mention is the team that works here. It is, you just can't find more caring, caring staff and um, they're so welcoming of all the volunteers that come in to work with them. Um, it, it, they teach, they, they're gentle, they're just an amazing, amazing team right from the top to the bottom and the bottom to the top. Amazing. I always greet him and I just say, have a good day, Brian. And he says, same to you, and off I go. And then when I come and pick him up, it's, uh, it reminds me of the days you picked your kids up at school. <laughs> you know, all the parents are, <laughs> are here uh, picking everyone up. So you get to know, you get to say hello and recognize some of the other at people that are caring for their spouses or, or mothers or fathers. And uh, he, I usually just, I stop saying, what did you do today? Because he doesn't, won't remember that. Or what did you have for lunch? Uh, I just say, did you have a good day? And he says, yep, we had a really good day. So it's sort of overall, like over, overarching questions. You can't ask him in between. And that's certain, certainly a learning curve for me. But, you know, to pin down that he, like, I know he enjoys it. He doesn't remember what he's done, but the emotional, the, the emotional feelings that he has when he's here, I, I think stays with him, even if he can't verbalize it. There's a support group meeting, and again, I got information on how you join that. Um, so that, that's all helpful. So, yeah, it's, I, I said at the beginning that we're not in Kansas anymore and we're not going back to Kansas. This is our life now. And the resources that are available in the community and certainly community care is, is, is the hub, I think, of all those little smokes, if you like. Um, I don't, as I said, I don't know how I could do it without, without them. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us today at our Adult Day program. Hope that you learned uh, a lot about the program, how it operates, and the benefit it has for the clients and the caregivers. And if you'd like to learn more about the variety of services that we offer, uh, Adult Day included, but uh, all the other programs that we offer at Community Care City of Corth Lakes, we encourage you to visit our website at www.ccckl.ca.
and we hope to hear from you soon. Or you can call us at 705-324-7323. Maybe you want to um, join our programs or become a part of our volunteer teams.